And if we close it on up, which is not easy to do because this thing is kind of a piece of trash. There we go. Nope. Wake up, wake up, maybe. Okay, yeah. Already, right off to the right off the the gun, we're seeing what quality product this is. Is it fucking Christ? Can't even shoot a video with this thing. Hey everyone. What do I have here? I got a little padlock, but it has it has no holes. Almost no holes. The only holes are this little hidden USB port, but you notice on the front, tap here. Yes, this is an RFID lock. It is something that uh, Ian Spy, somebody on Twitter, had pointed out to me. And it's, you know, I said, okay, you press down on it, you wake it up, and it comes with little uh, cheesy fobs. All right, beep, beep, okay, yay, and it's awake. Very cool. Uh, Ian Spy, he had found this. He was actually checking it out to find ways to make it work with uh, embeddable credentials. He was experimenting with that, and sure enough, so give it a little wake up. And there we go. Kind of a neat thing, right? However, this is a key example of, well, a couple of things. It's an example of how Utterly horrible, a lot of, uh, you know, smart products are. Uh, the user interface on this is just a steaming hell pile of shit. <laughs> I have gotten this lock stuck in broke-ass configurations in a number of ways. <clears throat> but the biggest thing, the biggest problem, even if all the user interface wasn't crap and the control software wasn't crap, just about any low-end consumer product that says it works with NFC, especially if it allows you to enroll other credentials, other manufacturers, brands of cards and such, right? Most of these products wind up not doing any real interesting interrogation of the card. They wind up not actually, you know, unlocking sectors and, and checking key data and specific blocks. What most of these locks will do when they work which this one doesn't... Jesus H. Christ, what a piece of shit. So if in addition to the credential they ship with or whatever tag that is, if you are able to enroll other credentials into the lock, chances are they're not doing a lot of interesting high-end authentication. In fact, most of the time, little consumer products like this, all they're looking for is the card serial number. I found out in the case of this card, it's not even the full card serial number. In the case of this lock, all it's looking for is the second two <laughs> little factors of the CSN. Uh, and I found that out because I was able to enroll and reprogram and copy the credential in my hand, which is an S50 MyFair, or a magic emulated version of MyFair, doesn't even have the same number of digits in the card serial number as an NTAG 216 like we have here. So, yeah, the, the vulnerabilities, of course, are pretty manifold. If we have this locked up, okay, we're nice and locked. Let's take a look and see if we can do a cloning attack against any of these cards and how trivial it would be to unlock this lock. All right. We have a lock. It operates with some tags. Let's go ahead and have a look at those. HF search. It's going to be yes. Again, NTAG 216, as we would expect. Very cheap, high frequency tag used for a number of NFC applications, just like my black hat badge. Again, NTAG 216. But the thing is, if you check out the original documentation that comes with this lock. We've got a nice printed, you know, factory printed here, but then down at the bottom, different printing, different, uh, you know, different details, run off at the factory. Tag ID, sticker ID, okay, so the tag 50D3, and there was a little, uh, you know, pop-on sticker that was also available in the package. What was that, 50D3? No. Are they really just using a tiny chunk of the user ID, the, uni the universal ID, the unique ID, the card serial number? 
As it turns out, yes, yes they are. That is supremely common with locks and other sort of low-grade consumer devices that claim to do authentication with NFC. They're not really unlocking all the sectors and block data on these cards. Most products like this are just using the CSN. And if you dig into the, the documentation, a lot of them will say CSN mode only when they talk about you know uh, high-frequency compatibility. So if we were to take a Chinese magic card, right? This is, it's like a, like a MyFair card, but it's not. It has some special backdoor commands. Have a look here, what do we got? All right, yes, backdoor commands enabled. And our universal ID, our, our unique ID, our card serial number is just 1234. This lock will probably see it, but it won't like it. It's obviously not enrolled. We got a beep. Yep. Get a little, get a little no chirp. But what was the card serial number of our good tag? Ooh, multiple tags. Yeah, I got to move you away from there. There it was. All right, we have this whole long UID. But this lock, it wasn't using the full UID. The documentation, all it showed was, you know, four characters. Could it really be as simple as just these characters? Is all it doing is checking the very beginning of the card serial number? Let's go ahead, copy that, and try to clone that. Not even, because the, you know, the S50, the Magic My Fair, with the Chinese backdoor commands, you can set block zero. However, you can't set a full NTAG 216 card serial number. HFMFC set UID. If we just try to set a card serial number that is these first few characters, right? We don't want one, two, three, four. We want to go ahead and copy part of the end tag that came with this product. Let's see how that works. Okay, set new UID. HF search. There we go. We have now, we haven't copied the full CSN, the full UID. Have we copied just enough to make this lock happy. Wake it up. There you go. Now, here's an interesting case. What if we're gonna set UID, but we're not even going to do the full UID that we, we grabbed out. We're just going to set 50D3 as that second and third pair and drop zeros on either side of it. So as minimum as possible. We do have the 50D3. Will this lock still work? Yeah, it seriously does. So be careful out there. Yes, this is really neat. Yes, it's cool that like, let's say I go to the gym, I get in the pool. I don't care if I have a, a proper lock for my locker. Because if I have the lock, you know, in my hand, if I have the chip, I don't need to carry keys. That's neat, right? However, if anybody with a magic card can get close to you, because again, you don't have to unlock block seven or any other key data and credential data. Anybody can snarf a user ID, a, a unique ID, I'm sorry, a card serial number out of that tag. Any, any high frequency tag just farts its card serial number anytime you're near it. If you can snag that and write it to block zero, even on a kind of credential that shouldn't be supported by this lock, and it opens, that's a problem. And that's a perennial problem with many products in this kind of category. So whatever you do, stay safe out there and be aware of the risks. Well, as we saw, this thing has some problems, both in the user interface and in uh, how it works itself with the electronicals. But it's, it's pretty scant on the documentation side in terms of how it works on the innards. What we really might need to do is go ahead and take this thing apart to get a proper view at it. And through the magic of buying two of them, that's the exact plan I have. Stay tuned for a future video. <laughs> Stay safe out there. Oh my holy god. So it's actually stuck in the open position right now. You can't... You... Nope, can't, can't do that. Can't wake it up. Can't... Do... Bang up job, fellas. Excellent product. <laughs>